Hello, Christ is in our midst. I'm Father Kevin Long of St. Elias Antioch and Orthodox Church in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Today is Tuesday, September 29th, 2020, and here are the readings for today. The first reading is from St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 15, verses 39 through 45. Not all flesh is the same. People have one kind of flesh, animals have another, birds another, and fish another. There are also heavenly bodies, and there are earthly bodies. But the splendor of the heavenly bodies is one kind, and the splendor of the earthly bodies is another. The sun has one kind of splendor, the moon another, and the stars another, and stars differ from star in splendor. So will it be with the resurrection of the dead. The body that is sown is perishable, it is raised imperishable, it is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory, it is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. In the Gospel of St. Luke today is our reading from the Gospels, chapter 5, verses 17 through 26. One day Jesus was teaching, and Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting there. They had come from every village of Galilee and from Judea and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was with Jesus to heal the sick. Some men carrying a paralyzed man on a mat, and they were trying to bring him into the house to lay him before Jesus. When they could not find a way to do so because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and lowered him on his mat through the tiles in the middle of the crowd right in front of Jesus. When Jesus saw their faith, he said, Friend, your sins are forgiven. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law began thinking to themselves, who is this fellow who speaks blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Jesus knew what they were thinking, and he asked, Why are you thinking these things in your heart? Which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up and walk? But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the paralyzed man, I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. Immediately he stood up in front of them and took what he had been lying on and went home praising God. And everyone was amazed and gave praise to God. They were filled with awe and said, We have seen remarkable things today. What we see in the Gospel of Luke is almost identical to what we see during the Lenten season in the Orthodox Church from the Gospel of St. Mark about the story of Jesus healing the paralytic who has been lowered from the roof by his friends. And what a remarkable testimony that is. Think about how complicated that is. If you can actually open up the roof and lower the mat, that means that the roof itself is somewhat precarious. And yet here these four men are climbing up on this roof with another man, balancing themselves on this roof, taking away part of this roof, lowering him down, putting themselves at risk as they try to do this for their friend. The depths and the lengths that they went to try to get their friend healed is truly remarkable. And this is part of what Jesus sees, because they went through all that length because they believed that Jesus would be able to heal their friend. And so Jesus indeed does heal their friend, tells him that his sins are forgiven. And that's an excellent tie-in to what we see in the epistle today because the man has a physical body and this physical body his physical body has a corruption we all have corruption and by corruption i don't mean dishonest politicians i mean that our bodies decay our bodies as we get older and older and older fail to do the kinds of things that we hope that they are be will be able to do i can't do at you know my age now the things that i could do when I was in my lower 40s, so, or even lower 30s, 20s, whatever. As we get older, our bodies become less and less responsive to doing the kind of tasking or taxing demands that we have in our earlier years. And so St. Paul talks about this in the letter to the Corinthians today. He says that when we are raised, our perishable bodies, our corruptible bodies, are going to be raised and be incorruptible. Sown in dishonor because corruption does have that other darker element of being sinful or of being corrupt, you know, in the bad sense, of course. 
and yet when we rise, it'll be raised in glory, not in corruption. In weakness, because again, if a truck comes, I'm not going to be able to stop it, but it's going to be raised in power. And it will be, a, it's a natural body now, part of nature. We are a composite being of flesh and blood, but also a composite being of body and spirit. But when we think about it, our bodies, our physical bodies, basically come from all of the elements around us. You know, the story goes, we are what we eat. Our bones contain calcium, our blood contains iron, our flesh has all sorts of different types of compositions in them. There are all sorts of different, our stomachs have hydrochloric acid. I mean, there are all sorts of different kinds of chemical compounds that exist within us. It is a totally natural body. Of course, we have a soul and a spirit, but those things are the things that will become dominant upon our rising from the dead, but we will still remain in a physical body. And this is a very important thing for us to understand. You know, some people think, oh, we just rise as spirits. No, we are physical beings, but God blessed the physical world. And so the physical world right now is corrupted. But when Christ rises, the, um, when he comes in the second day, and when he comes to bring us all into the kingdom of heaven, whenever that may be, the physical world itself will be renewed will be fixed and will be brought back to its splendor that it had before the fall. When Adam and Eve were in the garden, the physical world was perfect, but it was also in complete and total harmony with the, with the spiritual world. The problems today are that the spiritual and the physical tend to be at odds with one another. We tend to overemphasize the physical and completely forget the spiritual. But when the second coming does happen, whenever that may be, that at that time, the physical and the spiritual will be in complete and total harmony with one another. We will see God clearly. Right now, we see if, if ever at all through extremely dim glasses. So these are the essences, if you will, the, 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 the main points, I think, of orthodox, the orthodox understanding of the resurrection from the dead. What we take from here in St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians, that our bodies, even though they are what they are at the second coming, when Christ comes to raise us from the dead, then our bodies will be completely glorified as he is glorified, completely whole as he is completely whole, in this perfect spiritual and physical being, raised and glorifying God in all the things that we do. So it's very hopeful and it's very exciting to think about but at the same time, we have to do such things right now, as we remember that our physical bodies are indeed the temple of God. We need to do the things with our bodies right now that preserve them and keep them respectable and holy. So this is our challenge for this day and every day, that we go and do the things that are well-pleasing to God, both in our spirits and in our bodies. And we go and we do those things and proclaim the resurrection and the hope and the reconciliation between man and God to everyone who has ears to hear. Well, may God bless you and keep you today and always you and your families. I pray that you have a great day and God willing, we'll see you tomorrow.